Is there any new developments, anything that you're doing since we last spoke that maybe I should ask you so you could talk about? You know, I, um, I think, you know, we, when did we speak? What, November, December? Dude, it's, you know what, with pandemic time, I, I, I don't know. Let me, let me well, see. I'm working, on, I'm working on the compounding. It's pandemic time plus startup time. So like <laughs> a couple months can be uh, sort of a lifetime. Right? You know, we're, yeah. we're growing very fast. Um, uh, so we just uh, raised a round of funding um, to sort of accelerate some of that growth. You know, we started mm -hmm. Make My Move really is kind of an experiment about a year ago. Um, and we, we've been really pleased with sort of seeing the, the thesis play out. Um, you know, communities across the country are participating. We've, we've had, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of visitors just in the first year uh, alone of movers that are kind of looking for their, uh, their next place. Uh, and so we're, we're excited to be a small part of that and, um, uh, you know, grow the business. That's great. So, so, so you got, this is your first round of funding or? or so uh, first under uh, make my move, yeah. So um, uh, so we we had been for a couple of years working on a project to help recruit talent to the state of of Indiana, um, uh, and and it was really kind of the, those tools and, and methodologies that we kind of re uh, rebranded as make my move uh, and rolled out uh, nationally. So. Um, uh, certainly our biggest round of funding, so uh, a little over two and a half million dollars of uh, kind of seed funding to, to get moving, start hiring some engineers and uh, off to the races. And this is after you left Angie to do this, right? Yeah, so Angie, uh, Angie's List, but now it's Angie, I guess, is that? Yeah, so uh, it, when I left, it was still Angie's List. Um, so I and my co-founders all came from um, that uh, that business. Bill Austerly, my um, uh, started Angie's List, led it for a lot of years. And when we were all kind of winding down, we knew we wanted to work together again. Um, uh, we just didn't know what it was. And you know, at the time, uh, we were starting to see um, uh, some data coming out of uh, schools that, that suggested the workforce was shrinking in the state of Indiana for the first time in the state's entire history. So, you know, those are big, scary numbers. And we, you know, we thought we could actually make, uh, you know, use all the uh, uh, targeted marketing and consumer brand experience that we developed at Angie's List uh, to sort of find and qualify would-be movers to Indiana at, at reasonable scale. And so we... Um, uh, tackled that for for a couple of years, um, uh, and and you know the pandemic I, I think for us sort of presented an opportunity. Um, uh, number one, uh, we recognize that the the issues that were plaguing Indiana plague communities all across the country uh, and and the world for that matter. I mean, you know, uh, Italy is going through the exact same thing that Indiana is. Um, uh, uh, you know, th in that they've been losing um, uh, residents for you know a lot of years and. And losing residents, you know, we think about the world in terms of flywheels. You know, it, if you're losing population, that means that less money can be invested in amenities, which means more people leave. It, it works in reverse, though. If you can start to attract individuals, um, you can invest the incremental dollars that they bring in more amenities that bring uh, more uh, more people. So we really see this uh, as as a way to help communities. Uh, all over the place uh, grow um, and and find a way to sort of build a sustainable method uh, for growth. See, this so, is great. Uh, you just brought, yeah, it, we didn't do the official you know introduction, but you just I I didn't want to interrupt you because you were giving such a great flow of of what you're doing all that. But but let me properly introduce you. Okay, so Evan, great. and it's Hawk, right? Is that the right? That's correct. Yep, Eric Hawk, founder of Make My Move, and. And I think he just eloquently walked through what he does and for that yeah, happy- Actually, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick because yeah. you said Eric and not Evan. So I think we have to oh. start. Yes. <laughs> this is our first blooper in our brief yeah. history of having a podcast. I, I wanna I, make I, sure we have the guest name right. Sorry. That, that's that's so. polite for you to say, Michael, but I've made a lot of bloopers. So yeah, <laughs> I, I guess maybe you guys didn't notice it. So Evan, <laughs> Evan Hawk, welcome to Happy at Work. And it's all about bringing positivity in the workplace, empowering workers, making them happier, and then bringing on really smart guests like yourself to talk about your journey to be, you know, starting up, make my move, and giving some leadership tips as well. So I know we just kind of launched into it. And, and I think Mike had a question. So we can kind of just kind of jump into it and let's 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 do this. Sure. So Evan, it's it's great to have you on the show. And I love the idea of having a business like yours where populations are dropping in certain communities and they want to bring you in to 
incentivize people to move to those communities. But what's what's the first step? Do you have to get buy-in from like city council or government? Like how do you how do you get started with bringing people to a community? Yeah, so you know what's interesting is it's still so early in this that, that I, I think what we're seeing is, are just the early adopters and their creativity, how they're they're getting it done, and it's a little bit different in every community. So a, a lot of the very early adopters um, were sponsored by private foundations. But Tulsa, Oklahoma, was the very first of these these programs. They started in 2018 uh, and are sponsored by the George Kaiser Foundation. So you know, an organization that believes in that community and, are, and is um, uh, putting their money where their mouth is, you know, they're, um, they're, they're wanting to help grow. Uh, and so they seeded that program and, you know, able to get it going and, and prove that it is sustainable. Um, other um, uh, programs, you know, it might be um, uh, the local economic development corporation or, or chamber of commerce that, uh, that sponsors. Um, still others, it is the municipality. Uh, uh, but in every case, there, there's some, um, uh, you know, sponsoring agents or body uh, that sort of is sticking their neck out a little bit uh, and then working to get buy-in from the, you know, city councils and, uh, and the like. So, it, you know, I, I think there's a lot of adventure seekers that are doing this. You know, they're, they're um, uh, trying to, you know, prove out a concept. Uh, but we're really encouraged to see that those early adopters are seeing the returns that uh, that uh, that we've been sort of reporting for the last year or so. You know, these remote workers are enormously valuable to these local economies. They bring themselves, they bring you know their jobs, their economic spending, uh, their their t uh, taxes. Uh, we actually commissioned a study out of IU, Indiana University. That uh, to actually calculate the value of these people to local economies. And so if you recruited a software engineer from the Valley, let's say they're making $100,000 a year, which is, you know, would be pretty low for a, a software engineer. Um, uh, they're bringing $83,000 in incremental in economic impact in that first year alone. So when you think about the lifetime value of that person, you know, living in the community, um, it's a it's a big win. So Evan, again, welcome to the show. And I, uh, I'm really curious to kind of take a step back and talk a little bit about who it is that you're tracking to, attracting to your platform. Um, if I'm a remote worker and I'm living in Boston and it's incredibly expensive and I want to start a family and move to an area that offer, offers a higher, you know, lower cost of living, but a higher quality of life. Um, how, how would I leverage your platform to help me do that? And you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of the, the profile of the person that, that's coming. You know, it, this is a major trend. You know, for, for hundreds of years, people have moved out of uh, sort of the middle of the country towards economic centers, you know, to, to get jobs. And so, you know, um, uh, we see sort of high concentration of potential movers coming out of New York and Boston, San Francisco, L.A., and for, you know, um, good reason for, for a lot of people, those cities have become unlivable, they're expensive, they're crowded. And so what we find is that, uh, you know, people are moving for a lot of reasons, but it's kind of their personal uh, decision, they, they, they can choose kind of where they want to live what they value in, in life and find the place that, that matches that. So it's people looking for maybe more affordable places. Um, uh, uh, a lot of people are looking for more rural communities. They want more land. Uh, the number one request we get is um, uh, for uh, acreage, uh, but within reasonable proximity to an airport. So they don't want to be cut off from the world entirely, but they want to spread out a little bit. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we're just excited to kind of uh, see, like, who are these people? How, how can we help them? At Purdue's program, where, where I am right now, um, uh, the, the highest concentration was kind of that uh, early mid-career, so maybe people in their late 20s, early 30s, thinking about buying a house, maybe thinking about starting a family, um, and uh, wanting to find a new spot to, to settle down. So, Evan, when someone finds, uh, it, it's funny, I think you, Tessa and I are, are both in Boston, and we'd certainly love to lower the expenses. <laughs> you know, we could be like total Zoom teachers. Uh, so, you know, we actually could be part of your profile. One of my concerns, and I'm curious if uh, how you handle this is, I love the lower cost. I love the nature. I can go out with my dog. But what about friends? How do I know that I'm going to go out there and not be lonely and people be like, oh, there's that city guy. <laughs> Like how do I? You have, that, I you have that. Welcome. You have that grandma program, right, to help out. <laughs> right. Exactly. You, you know, people want to go places where they belong. 
you know, they feel like they're connected to, to that place. And some of the most successful programs uh, are the ones that actually prioritize uh, the, the, the sorts of activities that get people plugged in to, uh, uh, to the community. I mean, the, the, the incentives get a lot of um, um, attention. You know, they're, they're headline grabbing $10,000, $20,000 to move. But, what, you know, that's not enough alone to get somebody to move across the country. It de-risks it just enough to make it uh, uh, easy. But what people are really moving to is a new community. And so, you know, we see um, some of the most successful programs. Uh, uh, Jack mentioned uh, Greensburg, uh, Indiana's program. So they're offering $5,000, but uh, a lot of what they offer is programming to get people plugged into the community. So they have what they call a seat at the table. There are events uh, throughout the year that are actually kind of hard to get tickets to, and they got a table uh, at, uh, that all of the, the transplants can come, they can network, they can meet uh, new people. Um, and, and sort of get, get connected to the community. They actually have a meal delivery program where you know, uh, once a month for the first year, uh, neighbors are gonna bring you uh, food and get to know you. Um, and then they, they have a grandparents on demand uh, program where uh, a couple staples of the uh, pillars of, of the community um, uh, are stepping up, volunteering to you know, babysit if you need to go out on a Friday night uh, to stand in for your kids at grandparents day. You know, it, it's easy to say that a community is welcoming. It's another to like show it. And I think mm. uh, communities like Greensburg are, are, are showing. Um, Purdue's program, they have kind of a young professionals um, uh, networking uh, uh, program that, you know, people can participate in. There's, there's formal programming. So they have lecture series and things like that. Uh, and then informal stuff, you know, they'll have happy hours and stuff. But, you know, getting people plugged in, you know, there, there's sort of a, uh, you know, we're used to thinking about this as as a tech company, but there, there's customer acquisition and there's customer retention. You know, the, the incentives are great for the customer acquisition, but, but they have to immediately start turning their attention to, uh, to retention. Like, how do we actually get them plugged in so that they stay after that first couple of years? This might be a third rail question. So if you don't want to answer it, you don't have to, but I'm just curious about the politics of it. So we obviously live in a pretty polarized country and sure. we have a lot of migration happening from the Northeast or the West Coast coming into the center of the country. There's going to be different types of politics. Do you ever have to address those types of questions? Um, and is your platform at all involved with kind of local politics as far as what are the values of people who might be migrating towards uh, the center of the country? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I won't bite on the, uh, I won't dig too uh, far into it, but I'll share a couple perspectives. I, I think number one, um, you know, the mobility of workers is, uh, it, is a huge opportunity for those workers to self-select into the communities that they want. You know, they're, they're no longer wed to the specific location of, of their employer, which is huge. I mean, for the first time in history, people can choose where they, where they live. Um, and, and, you know, some people are moving for political reasons, um, uh, you know, they maybe to be closer to, uh, to, to more uh, like minded people or to get a, a away from uh, where they are right now. I, we don't hear that a lot. I wouldn't say that that is even in the top 10 of reasons that, that people are moving. Um, I, oddly enough, one of the most successful programs in Indiana um, uh, is in Bloomington, um, uh, which is sort of a blue dot in Oh, we lost his internet. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what happens. Sort of on the like <laughs> Oh, you know what, Evan? We just we just lost you for about probably about 15 seconds. So you oh. were talking about no, that's okay. I was really, I was really winding up. <laughs> <laughs> but you were talking about Bloomington, uh, yeah. a program in Bloomington yeah, so, Blue Dot, so and that's where we lost you. Bloomington, Blue, uh, Blue Dot in a red state. You know, I, I think we're seeing a lot of people move from bigger cities to um, uh, to those uh, 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 communities, you know, they offer a lot of the same amenities, maybe similar uh, politics to what they're used to. Taking a step back, though, you know, uh, a lot of what we're hearing from these local leaders is that they're, they want to use these programs to develop a little bit of diversity in their communities, diversity of demographic, diversity of thought. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I think the optimist in me is actually, you know, I'd like to think that our divisions aren't as uh, irreconcilable um, as, as sometimes it feels like they are. And, 
the best way I know to um, to reconcile conflict is just you know get in front of people. It's you know it's one thing that um, uh, to have a conflict via Twitter. It's another thing to share a meal with somebody. Uh, and my hunch is that we're far closer than than, than it feels. And I know I real quick, I know Jack has a question for you, but I just I just want to kind of close the loop to say I think your program could offer offer that bridge, right? It sounds like what your platform and what you're trying to do could really encourage young people to to see that they could be the facilitate that type of bringing people together and bridging the divide and so forth. So um, I, 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 too, am hopeful as well. So go ahead, Jack. Yeah, what Evan, it's really interesting. I'm seeing so many. Um, stories about digital nomads, uh, people working kind of around the world. Are you, do you have any thoughts about your platform kind of incorporating that? So maybe they won't live you know, for five years in let's say the Midwest, but they just want to kind of stay for a little bit in the Midwest and then maybe try the South and maybe try to go you know, out to, to the West or just explore different countries. Is, is that on the horizon you think? You know, I, I think that's already happening, and there are there are several other platforms that really cater to that that uh, particular yeah. persona. Uh, you know, um, some of the the offers that are on our site, I think, probably are more attractive to the nomads. You know, there, there's a whole slew of them in the Caribbean. You know, that uh, you know Barbados giving you know uh, one to two year visas uh, for uh, for the use of a temporary uh, uh, remote worker. So I think there's going to be a lot of that. Um, now is know, that I on your is that on your platform now or no? Or, yep, yep. I gotta check um, that. Wait, wait. Uh, bar, so, 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 <laughs> so, so, wait, so, like, I wouldn't have to like live there, live there. But if I want to, let's say, for you know, I'm here in New York and New Jersey, and it's cold here in the winter, and so yep. I think in Boston. So if I wanted to go down to Barbados, I, yep. you know, you could set it up where I could be there for like a month or two. Yeah, so I, I think they're trying to get people to stay a little bit longer. They're, they're long-term uh, visas, but they're not permanent. So uh, you know, they're targeting people that are wanting to maybe move for you know nine to twelve months. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but but you know, it sort of presumes that you're you're off to the next adventure um, after that. So I, I certainly think, particularly destination communities, are going to um, you know have no trouble. Uh, marketing to you know the um, the would-be travelers that want to uh, you know work out of paradise uh, for a little while. Um, um, it, Puerto Rico actually has a, a, another program. Uh, it's on, on the site. Um, and, and they're sort of formalizing the program a little bit, you know, actually kind of getting people plugged into the community like a, a lot of the um, uh, stateside uh, uh, communities. You know, I think really our, our intense focus right now though is in helping, um, uh, giving tools to the communities to actually land new residents. Um, and in a lot of ways, it, it's they're similar, but they, but they're uh, different in some in some key ways. And in particular, they're different in uh, sort of the economic uh, uh, drivers behind it. A better analog is uh, sort of the traditional economic development of recruiting companies. You know, I think for many decades, communities have competed to land. You know, the Amazons of the world uh, uh, to relocate, and for good reason. You know, uh, a, a business like Amazon brings. Um, uh, jobs and economic impact. Uh, but these remote workers, uh, it's sort of retail economic development in the sense that you can recruit the individual, they bring their job to. Uh, the difference is it's 100% it's incremental to, um, uh, to that community. It's a new person and a new job all, all in one uh, fell swoop. And, it, and it's uh, impactful day one. You know, they're, they're spending money the day they, they show up. And People that move are spending a lot of money in the, in the community. And so, you know, I think the, these people are looking for long-term residents, um, uh, you know, even if, if long-term is, you know, four or five years, um, uh, they're trying to, they're using this as a, as a mechanism to grow their uh, both tax base and, and the, the community in general. So Evan, how does, how does your company make money when, when people are moving? Like, what's the business model? Yeah, so uh, we have a couple options. Um, uh, our core product, um, uh, communities can subscribe uh, to essentially a pipeline of, of movers. So the, the website serves as, as a way for them to sort of merchandise themselves. We, we promote and, and um, uh, uh, sort of advertise the communities on, on the site. So I, if I'm a community, I could pay about a thousand bucks a month to get promoted on the site um, and to uh, have tools to sort of engage the people that come through the platform uh, and make it easy uh, to land them. 
Um, if, if they need a little extra help, maybe they, they need help building the program, securing funding for the program. Uh, we have a full services business. And so we'll come in, kind of handle um, uh, soup to nuts, uh, setting it up for them and helping them uh, manage and recruit individuals. So I, one, one question I have is, you know, now kind of taking off the, the, you know, the selling or talking about make my move and putting on your entrepreneurship hat. So you're in a startup, high growth, you're building yep. your team. How is your internal organization and how are you managing this kind of high growth position and building your team and creating a positive workplace environment? Yeah, great question. So, you know, we have the benefit of our, our core team has worked together for a very long time. Um, and, and, you know, there are a few things you can choose in life. Who you work with is a really big one. And, and I think we've uh, chosen deliberately and chosen well. So, you know, um, there's about half a dozen of us that, you know, have worked together for, you know, 10 plus years. And, you know, I, I think, you know, business and um, you know, managing an organization, it's a bunch of relationships. And so how do you model, you know, uh, effective conflict and, and uh, uh, sort of um, uh, co-rowing uh, at the boat? So, you know, I, I think we, uh, we have a, a general culture of, um, we don't take ourselves very seriously at all. Um, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty low key and uh, we have a lot of fun. We take the work very seriously. You know, we, we have, um, uh, you know, in, intense goals and, and uh, we, we really love achieving those, those goals together. So, you know, um, uh, we're, we're big on sort of measuring things. We, we, we try to distill everything down to um, uh, sort of targets and, and um, uh, OKRs, uh, objectives and key results, um, uh, so that, you know, we know which direction we're going. We know how this person's work impacts this uh, person's work. Um, and we try to communicate as, as, uh, as much as we possibly can. You know, it's been an adjustment uh, kind of moving to a, a remote environment ourselves. You know, we've uh, always been uh, co-located and now we're uh, distributed. Um, uh, but thankfully, you know, the tools are you know, so much better than they were, you know, 10-ish years ago that, um, you know, you can still ha you know, have a, a highly collaborative, um, uh, highly sort of relationship-driven uh, uh, culture, even, even uh, from afar. And Evan, when someone is interested in, in perhaps making a move from, you know, a city into, they probably have like two or three places that they're, that they've shortlisted. Is there a way to sort of test drive the experience or like go for a weekend or is there anything sort of formalized or do people just sort of show up and walk around and see if they feel the vibe? Are there any, any handholding opportunities? <laughs> You know, we've been surprised by a couple things. Um, one, uh, we've been surprised the degree to which these these folks are relatively free agents. You know, we we kind of came in thinking that people would have like a very specific one or maybe two places that they're thinking about moving. Uh, Six percent of our registrants would literally move anywhere. Um, um, most most people on the platform probably have kind of a general profile of where they're looking. Maybe they want to live in a college town or they want to live in a small town, um, but there might be like half a dozen uh, potential uh, options that, that they're choosing from. And so, um, you know, a, a lot of people are uh, sort of visiting for a weekend, They'll, you know, stay in an Airbnb for a long weekend, kind of get a sense of uh, what, uh, what nightlife is like or uh, what, what have you. Some of the programs actually formalize that. So Purdue's program actually hosts uh, weekends on campus uh, where they, they'll have, you know, half a dozen or so of the, um, uh, of the recruits come the same time. You know, they'll, they'll introduce them to, uh, uh, to people, uh, let them ask questions, let them tour schools. Um, that's been a very successful program in that, you know, the, the, the conversion rate of people that come to those visits that actually end up moving is very high. Um, compared to uh, other programs that maybe just kind of leave it, uh, leave it up to the, the, the individual. And what are some of the most popular places that people are, are interested in moving to? I, I, know, I noticed you mentioned uh, Purdue a few times and Greensburg, Indiana, but are there any, any others that are coming to mind? Yeah, so um, Southwest Michigan um, has had a lot of um, applic applications. So it's a lake town right on, on Lake Michigan, uh, uh, close to Chicago. Uh, so we have a lot of transplants, you know, thinking about moving from, uh, from Chicago. 
Um, West Virginia, a statewide program, been very popular um, uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, they have, it's a $20,000 incentive, $12,000 in cash, and then $8,000 in kind of local amenities. So, uh, you know, West Virginia is sort of uh, wealth of re uh, outdoor resources, and they're really um, uh, focused on, you know, through park membership and equipment rental, you know, getting you on the, the rivers and the mountains, uh, uh, enjoying the outdoors. Um, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, by far, you know, the, uh, has had the most confirmed moves. I think they've moved about 1,200 people since starting in, in 2018. Um, uh, and, oh, wait, you know, that's just 1,200. Great... I mean, that seems yeah, like a fair amount, 1,200. Yeah. And, and so you start um, going to say, like, what's, what's going on there? That's jarring. It. I think, honestly, if, if I'm given my sort of outsider's assessment, mm -hmm. um, People want to go where they're wanted, and and Tulsa has done a great job of saying, "Hey, we want you here." Um, so they, you know, they benefited from being first mover in this space. They're, you know, they're given ten thousand dollars and got a lot of press uh, for being the, the first to do that. Um, but you know, we talk to a lot of people who have moved through that program, and what they say is, you know, the the ten thousand dollars got my attention, but I moved because of this community that they introduced me to. You know, it's they're they're attracting tech workers of all types. Uh, sort of getting them plugged in through sort of formal programming. They actually pay that $10,000 in monthly installments. You have, to, you have to show up to the networking events to kind of get the money. And, and it, it does a great job of kind of getting people um, plugged in there. And they report an over 90% retention rate into that, that second year. So, you know, I think it's really a testament to, um, you know, a, a community banding together, telling their story and um, uh, sort of, getting a, a you know a wave of people to come in and, and sort of building community on on the fly and have you done any follow-ups with the tulsa people uh, the reason i ask is that I, i've always nicknamed boston the cold shoulder city because it's it's really hard to make a friend unless you get a puppy yeah. and then you're good to go <laughs> but when i when i moved to beijing i actually met more people in beijing in the six months i lived there than the 20 years i lived in boston because the expat community really stuck together. I think we're all yep. just afraid of being lonely and we didn't speak Mandarin. So anytime someone was, let's go here, let's go there, we all showed up. And I'm wondering, is it like an expat environment where that group is sort of you know, eating at the lunch table on their own? Or have you found that they're actually integrating with the locals uh, in the host towns? You know, it's a little bit of both. We're absolutely seeing sort of cohorts of people moving and, and sort of the, those people stay connected. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of them will say, you know, they would have moved years ago, but didn't have the, the benefit of sort of a built-in uh, network when, when they get there. So that there's a lot of ways in which these programs de-risk the move uh, for, for the mover. I will say, though, you know, um, it, it's a little bit of a cliche. I mean, that the middle of the country, there's a lot of really welcoming communities. And I think you'd be shocked at, at the degree to which, you know, going out to eat, you, need, you might just meet somebody, um, uh, you know, uh, on any, any given night, or you go to a, an event and people actually show up and, you know, they're shaking hands and, and like are, are genuinely interested in, in meeting. You. So, you know, I think, um, you know, I love Boston, I love uh, New York and, and all those cities, but I think a lot of what people are trying to find is that place that they can feel connected to. And they're using these programs to find that place. Well, you make a great point. I've done some trainings in Barbados, the nicest people in the world. And I think one of my favorite things was going to outdoor ballroom dancing to country music. Yeah. You just got to go. <laughs> it's fun, but it's, it's, there like are no strangers thing. at outdoor um, at dancing to country music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, I had a question for you, Evan, around the the target population. So you mentioned earlier in the conversation around you know the late twenties, early thirties, wanting to migrate, be able to buy a home, start a family, have access to to more resources. But I'm I'm curious, is that the only target population, or is that the ideal target population? Because I'm in my mid to late forties, but I also have my oldest going to college. My other second will be heading to college soon. And when I think about, gosh, at 50 years old, I still have 20 more years to work probably <laughs> um, where, you know, I could go, we, my husband and I could go anywhere. And, you know, I'm just curious as to, do you find like kind of different types of populations with different incentives 
wanting to experiment and travel and, and move, or is, is it really primarily the, the millennials that are, are making the move? No, it's, it's, it's across the board. You know, we really think about the world in terms of anchor points and release points. You know, there, there are specific anchor points, like having a kid is, a, is an anchor point. You know, like you're, uh, you're, they're going to be going through school and all that. Um, that kid graduating from college is a release point. Like suddenly you're kind of free. Ah, what, what's this next chapter going to look like? And we're actually one of the, 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 the um, most popular cohorts in uh, for college towns is kind of like mid to late fifties. Uh, you know, maybe they're thinking about where they might retire eventually. Maybe they want to audit some classes and some of their, their, their free time, uh, they've got some disposable income. They get season tickets to uh, to the sporting events. I mean, that that's um, that has been that's probably number two in the uh, in the demographic uh, list would be kind of that um, uh, maybe we call it kind of a last act kind of career um, uh, trajectory. But there, you know, the, within the the margins, there's all kinds of different um, uh, sort of demographics of folks, where they are in life, what they're trying to get out of it. You know, I, I think. Um, uh, one of the things we encourage communities to do is really think hard about what their community has to offer and who that might be attracted to. You know, it's, this is a simple marketing exercise. You're trying to find your target audience and you're trying to tell the story in a way that, that resonates with them. And I think for, you know, for any community uh, across the, um, uh, the, the country, you know, there might be a different target audience. Um, and that's actually part of what we do with our, our services business is help them unpack that, help them craft that, that story and reach the audience. I'm curious though, Tessa, where, where, where do you want to go? It sounds like you have something, yeah. you know, you have something in mind. <laughs> Well, it's, I want to go somewhere warmer. Hey, I, <laughs> my, top of my list. Top of my yeah, list. Yeah, but my, my husband and I actually, we did a, a road trip and um, uh, with our kids almost probably eight years ago, but we loved uh, the Southwest. We loved Albuquerque, mm -hmm. New Mexico. And, you know, but when I look out there, there's not, it's hard to find a teaching job at a college because there aren't a lot and so forth. But um, you know, to Michael's point, if if I could start to remote teach or, or build a consulting business and could live anywhere, it's really about that exploration. And, and when yeah. you think about the services that your platform could provide different populations who will have different needs, you know, if I was in my yeah. late 20s with young kids, I might need, you know, a community around daycares and, and understanding, you know, how to raise kids in a community versus, 50 somethings who are empty nesters who, you know, probably just want to have some fun, <laughs> uh, yeah. have a lot more culture and things like that. So, um, yeah. So I think that that it's, I just was curious as to whether or not your platform kind of serves both populations. I, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, th I think people move for a lot of reasons. Again, like our, our job is to, is to kind of help them find the place that, that best matches um, that, that next phase of life for them. There are communities in, in the Southwest that are actively recruiting. So Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, Tucson, Arizona have, have programs. Um, uh, and, you know, it's funny because you hear a lot in, 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 uh, in the news about sort of migration to regions. Uh, so you hear that oh, oh, Southwest uh, United States is just, you know, people are flocking there. And that, that's true in the aggregate, but there are individual communities that, you know, are, are more winners or more uh, losers. And so there, there are individual communities that I think are going to start springing up, uh, you know, smaller cities in, in those areas that you know, are, have a vested interest in growing their population and are going to be running these programs as a way to do that. So Evan, yeah, but, as we wrap up, we're... Uh... Where do you want to live? What what kind of what kind of things do you want? Oh, I'm firmly in anchor point uh, territory uh, right now. So my kids are in uh, elementary school. Uh, we're in Indiana um, uh, for for the foreseeable future. But uh, I'm with Tessa. I, I think uh, my my wife and I have a pact. If we are to move, it will be someplace warmer. Uh, it's negative three degrees in in oh. uh, Indiana right now. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to be <laughs> on the so beach cold. instead. <laughs> That is cold. I thought it was cold up here in New Jersey. That is cold. Is yeah. that normal? Is that like typical winter temperature there? Uh, I would say it's on the, the cold end of yeah. uh, a, a normal uh, range. You know, in, in, the, in the thick of winter, you know, it's not unheard of to be in the single digits, uh, but this is a cold spell. Although in typical Indiana fashion, it's going to be 50 degrees on Tuesday. So uh, who, can, who can keep up? Hey, I haven't seen it on your site, so maybe I missed it. 
do you have videos of kind of like success stories of people, you know, showing, you know, meeting new friends and looking, you know, showing the towns? Is that on the yeah, side? Yeah, we, and I just we absolutely it or... do. So, okay. um, and, and really, you asked earlier about kind of updates. Yeah. We, we've been furiously um, uh, developing uh, the site. And one of the, the recent updates uh, was new community profiles that has video. So if you look at like, like Greensburg, Indiana's uh, uh, profile, um, uh, lots of rich content, uh, both oh, cool. that they produce as well as user generated content, you know, locals uh, uh, taking video on, on their phone about what they love about uh, uh, the community, uh, what they're hoping to get out of, out of this, this program. I'll, I'll shoot you a couple examples, but uh, yeah. yeah, we're, I, one of the things that is so exciting about, about this is just hearing those individual stories, you know, what's motivating people uh, uh, to make that move. Uh, what's the experience been like? Do they find what they're looking for? Or are they kind of still, uh, still searching? Um, uh, it, it's fun stuff. Do you and your team ever go out there to like, Greensburg or wherever, it just, just, well, that, just that, I say mean, hi, how right you doing? Now. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we make the rounds, talk to, talk to the movers, talk to the, the communities. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a very personal exchange. Uh, you know, it's the, the personal nature of the community telling their story, what they, what they love, what they're proud uh, of, uh, kind of the hope and pride that they have um, uh, for their community on into the future. And then for the, for the mover, it's a highly personal de decision. I mean, they're choosing where they're going to spend at least the next couple of years uh, of their life. And it's a big, you know, it's a big adventure, but it's also a big risk. And so it, it you know, you, you hear a little bit about their apprehension, a little bit about their hope for the, uh, the future. Um, but it, it's all good in my book. Is there anything we didn't ask you that you think um, would, would make sense to, to, to add to it, to share with everybody? You know, I don't think so. We, we covered a lot of it. You know, I'll just maybe add a, a point of emphasis that, you know, we're living through maybe one of the biggest societal shifts, in, uh, certainly in our lifetimes, but I, I would venture a guess in, in many generations. You know, the, the decoupling of place from employment uh, means that, you know, tens of millions of people are free to choose where they live in, uh, you know, on, into the future. So, you know, remote work is, uh, is, is less a revolution of the workplace and more a revolution of, of personal choice and, and life. You know, you, you, can, you can move based on the things that you value. And I, I'm really excited to just see over the next, you know, four or five years, uh, you know, how people avail themselves to that, that freedom and how that, those choices sort of uh, redistribute the economic impact across the country um and and all that comes with it well i have to say evan i think you you picked the right time to create the absolute perfect business <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> on that i 100 percent agree with your last statement so many congratulations to you and your team because i i think you, the future is very bright on that front so congratulations thank you for that i appreciate it Evan, it's a great idea. And if you ever make it to Boston, I take all my students sailing. So bring the kids and uh, we'll go, uh, we'll go hang out on the harbor. <laughs> I, I will take you up on that. Yeah. I, I'm not one to hear an invitation and ignore it. So uh, expect we're, we're, me to show up. Although I know everyone's migrating from Boston, but maybe you can have a reason to. Uh, that, that just leaves extra room for visitors like me. Exactly. It's, it's true. And we're, we're bumping up to a 40 foot boat because I want the two wheels just because they're cool. So yeah, we'll just go hang out. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Well, Evan, expect thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm going to still kind of put a pitch in there. You got to find a way, not an Airbnb like thing, but a way for like Tessa and I and Christine and Mike to find like, we could go somewhere warm, but we don't necessarily want to uproot our whole family. So there got to be some sort of way you could do that. Cause I'm, I'll sign up. I'll be the first customer to do it. If you're able All right. to get us there, like I'll go to the Southwest too. So Tessa, if you're interested, I'm, I, that's, that's a cool area. I love it. But anything that's warm, I can't take the cold anymore. I'm I'm down. Okay. And I can send, do whatever. Send I me your short anyway. list. I'll, I'll yeah, put yeah, you on yeah. the notification. At the, yeah. You'll get a notification when when the visas open up to, it, to paradise. And then when we do international too, when you get international and you start having digital nomads, yeah, sign me up for that too. Yep. Yeah, we're probably about two years out from uh, a, a European expansion, but yeah? it, it's on the roadmap. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I'm in for that. Yeah, I'm Great. I'm ready for my under the Tuscan sun right? experience, right? In Italy. Yeah. If everyone's migrating out of Italy, I'll I'll go. <laughs> well, that, 
they'll give you a house and like thirty thousand dollars to move to the Italian countryside. So uh, it I it mean, can I happen. Yeah. Well, that's great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Evan. This is, this is, you know, it's it's so nice when you hear a great story. You know, it's such a cool business you built, and and you're really helping people live better lives. Because if you're in a place and you're miserable and happy and high taxes and maybe high crime rate and not great schools, and and now you can go to your platform and find a place to say, hey, oh my God, th this is fantastic. You know, wonderful people. I get a warm embrace, less taxes, more sunshine. You know, more friends. So it's, it's really a nice thing. You're doing a, a great business. Yeah. yeah. So good for you, man. I love it. Thank love you. It. Thank you so much. Evan, Jack, good to see you again. Today. Michael and Tessa, good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank so, you so much for your time today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Let's keep in touch. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah, bye.